court, the law, the government, the law told him to give him my money back. Wicked art man wanted to take my life. I saw myself putting three bullets in this man. It wasn't about love, it was about hate. I was angry. I saw myself murdering this man. I didn't put this in a testimony before, but I, I drove by his house. And I called him, I said, Virgin, me here say, I look for me. Don't look no further, me I come for you. My brethren, I heard that you're looking for me. Don't look no further, I'm coming for you. And when I drove by his house, the police car was there. One hour after the police called me and said, Mr. Thompson, huh, we hear that your car called this man to cause him bodily harm and you utter a threat to this man. Is that true? <laughs> Yo, let's do a shaggy upon him, you know? It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Hey. Right. It wasn't me. I lick him with a shaggy. And I stopped this man. Two weeks. Followed him. Found out when he picked up his daughter at school. Found out when where, what street he drives on following him about 10 o'clock one night he didn't even know what was coming see there are a lot of people that have been trying to kill you a lot of people have been putting witchcraft on you a lot of people have been trying to take away your husband a lot of people have been trying to take away your woman a lot of people have been trying to mess with your kids because they can't get to you because you're sanctified you're holy ghost filled you're water baptized you got Jesus on your mind they're trying to mess with you but you're covered with the blood of Jesus. So they're trying to go through the back door. He said, she said, he said, she said. And if you follow here, said, you're not reached nowhere. Bring me the proof. You cannot be partially pregnant. You either breed or you not breed. up and powder it up you're either pregnant or you're not pregnant you can't be partially pregnant so bring some proof when you come and accuse somebody because what you take one minute to destroy take a whole lifetime to build back leave people business alone leave people business and mind your own Yo. <laughs> leave people business alone the next person you think to gossip about or to speak ill of in the name of Jesus I pray that God lock up your job bone the next person you choose to put down three finger pointing back at you you hypocrite think on these things 14 years ago they put a program on television showing my gangster lifestyle you will see it a matter of fact on the dvd titled who god hire no man fire you will see it back there there's a limited amount and the reason why i don't have them in their proper casing is because they've been sold out it will show me in the dance hall on the stage with the with my strippers and it will show the lifestyle i used to have before and the two girls that you will see in there that I was dancing with, one white, one black, those girls would go out and if I tell them to do anything, they do it. Because they don't leave their gun. They were my boos. I'm talking about reality of who I was. And now who God says I am. That's what I am. I do not need anybody's approval to serve God. When I was out there as a bad man, you didn't come and help me. Now I put down my gun, you want to preach to me and tell me how to live? My hat too big, you look too tall, you're too brown, you're too black, you're too this, you're too that. Shame on you. Go and witness to the sinner, not the righteous. Stop trying to save those who are already converted. I have a, I have a project for you all out there, everybody. No one is excluded because every last one of us at some given time had done wrong in our lives. Because if you were never a sinner, you're in more trouble 
than the worst of sinners because my Bible tells me say all have sinned and if you were never a sinner then Jesus Christ died for no reason at all because he said he was wounded for your transgression bruised for your iniquities and it's only by his stripes not yours not because you're good not because you don't miss Sunday church or Sabbath none of those reasons not because your, your, your pastor is your uncle none of those reasons none of those things can take you to heaven but he says come just as you are without one plea I don't care what your problem is some people think the same seem to think that if somebody is gay or if somebody is a pedophile or if some some of the worst things we want to think that God can't save them God invests in bad company God invests in bad company and I'm telling you now take ten feathers ten feathers this is a project ten feathers and look into the ten people that you've hurt the most in your whole entire life I know there's more than ten someone will go on like there's only two <laughs> but there is plenty 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 take ten feathers no, no, we're not going to find fall this time of the year because the storm blow them away. <laughs> Ten feathers. <laughs> and put the feathers in front of the people them house on their step. And leave it there. And come back the next day. And every last feather that remains there, your sins are forgiven. But those feathers that has blown away, those lives that you have destroyed with your big mouth, your laba laba, your washy washy, weary weary, you just run up your mouth like you have diarrhea. Oh, if you stop, man, it's really gone too far now. Our oh, one children don't even know how to take us anymore because we tell Miss Jane one thing and we tell them another thing. They see us go one way and then telling them to go another way. It's confusion. So that's why the kids are so brave now and don't even care what you say anymore. They have a mind of their own and people are dying as a result of it. The people who feathers have blown away, they will never be able to be forgiven. You have destroyed their lives. You cannot forgive them. They will not forgive you because the damage that you've done is taking them a whole lifetime. But this man, following this man down Ivy Lane, looking to kill him and he does not even know you know many times the devil tried to kill you and if it wasn't for the prayer of somebody you would not be here if it wasn't somebody's prayer mama's prayer daddy's prayer somebody's prayer saved your life many times you should start praying for somebody you should start thinking about somebody when they don't think about you but this man was gonna die and he did not know following him down the street of Ivy Lane when I saw the man in front of me and I figure okay we got him now waiting to just wait until he stops and step out of the car and say yo virgin you look for me because bloop, bloop. that's how it goes and that will make news but the ones that are doing the good work I don't see no television media here only the one that we provide the ones that turn out good no media don't run them down so it's up to you and us as born-again Christian to take the negative man who's cleaned up his life and turned his life around and let him be publicly known the same way they publicize the murderers them and the killers them we need to put positive forward nobody does it so what I did is I went out and I said Lord help me so that my story and other people like myself who's turned around can go out there and let other bad men see that if I can change and others can change, they can change too. We need examples to ourselves. Somebody who's been there because sometimes the only person can help a bad man is a person who was a bad man. You don't know everything and no one hand can clap. You're either part of the solution or a part of the problem. When I was driving, following this man to kill him, ahead of me, it was about, about 50 yards, I heard my grandmama's voice. Thank God for grandmothers. 
Where the word of God says, grow a child the way in which he ought to be grown, that when he becomes a full grown man, he cannot depart from it. That is true. When I heard my grandmother's voice, she said, boy, she called me Bertie. You know why you know now no call me so. Bertie is a name you give a old man. Bertie! Mas Bertie, oi! I have something you call one jackass. Giddy up, Bertie. I don't know how no wicked sound. You can't give people some dreadful name in Jamaica, you know. What boy, look at at least look at the dictionary of the gleaner. Bertie. <laughs> so when we reach 90, you can't call me so. <laughs> but I heard my grandmother's voice, and she said, Son, if you try everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. Try Jesus. Try Jesus. And I thought to myself, Grandma. Come out of my head no man. I don't want to murder this man. I don't want my grandmother in my head. Because if she's in my head, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to hide my wrongs from her. Because I'm ashamed. So I said, Grandma, please, right now, just, just leave me alone no Grandma. I have to kill this man before him kill me. On my way to kill this man, when I threw Grandma out of my brain. And I kept driving. An invisible wall glass wall came up in front of me a glass wall and the Holy Spirit came to me and says anyhow you go further than this wall the car is gonna explode all of a sudden it wasn't grandma's voice anymore it was a voice of God himself are you that important that God would speak to you himself when you don't listen to your church brother your church sister or you don't listen to those who are around you who who could tell you the right things and you won't listen and then god himself come in a spirit and tell you and then you say mm, i have a dream last night you see i had a real dream last night it was so real you must know the voice of the holy spirit you must know the voice of god your grandparents knew the voice of God. Your great-grandparents knew the voice of God. And it's something that's passed down that goes through the blood. Because her blood is a part of your blood. And if she have the blood of Jesus in her and she passes it on to you, you will be reminded. That's what the Holy Spirit is there for, to quicken your mind. And the voice says, anyhow you pass this glass wall, car is going to explode. All of a sudden, <laughs> this bad man, yo, turn humble all of a sudden fear gripped my heart I wasn't afraid before my fire gun I do what I do already but, but all of a sudden a voice inside of me was stronger than anybody that has put fear because with me I was too stupid to be afraid from you bleed brethren bring it on but you see it wasn't about man flesh and blood it was about the Holy Spirit that I didn't know personally but I had fear. Fear gripped my heart. What God says, you must fear God. Serve Him in fervence. Serve Him. And I felt compelled to pull the car over. And when I pulled the car over to the curb, I took the 357 Magnum out of my waist and I put it under the car seat. Took a 45 out of my cowboy boots and I put it down. And I walked into that tent meeting. It was off to the right side and they were singing that song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the rich like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can see. I felt compelled, and when I walked into that church, I saw a whole lot of people. I saw a whole lot of people, and I walked. And as I walked, I heard a voice he says I love you I love you so much that I was in the nightclubs when when you were there I was outside of the nightclub waiting for you like a dog I sat like a puppy dog waiting for you son I love you so much but you ignored me son I sent an angel in there to get you son a white man 
I was drinking champagne and sitting down with over $12,000 pocket money in my pocket. One carat earring in my ear, diamond earring, wearing my Armani watch and wearing my, 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 my outfit, my Pierre Cardin outfit, $1,200 suits, long jerry curl, yaga yo, I was saying one. Trust me. And the man come and he says, you don't belong here. I looked at him, I said, man, hush up, man. Come and have some champagne. Shut up and have some champagne. He says, I don't want nothing from you. When a man says you don't want nothing from you, when you are to die, you have to question that in your mind. And say, my God. I said, oh, hush up, you fool. Just, just like that. I just shucked him off. But it was bothering me. It was bothering me. Two o'clock came. I'll never forget it. Club El Morocco in Calgary, Alberta, where my pimping was at its height. Body shop, all kinds of things going on. And this man said he didn't want nothing from me. Do you know that God doesn't want nothing from you but your soul? He doesn't want to take away your money. He doesn't want to take away your dreams. He doesn't want to take away your aspirations. He wants you to have all of them come true. Because God is the only one that will never betray you. I found out as a gangster from the street that God is the only one that I can trust. If I go into my story why I became a gunman, you'd bawl, you'd cry. What leads a young man to becoming a gunman? Gunmen aren't born, they're made. Just like how you make anything else in this life. Hard life, tough decision. When you're caught between a rock and a hard place and don't know what to do. You gotta make tough choices. A lot of you like to look down at people because they're, 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 they're sleeping around. But I don't see none of them who come and give them a dollar or ask them where they live or how they live. Some people come to church every Sunday and show you see a little tear in them stocking. You see them wear a little tight outfit. You don't know what they've been through. You don't realize that they said, Jesus, you're the only one that can help me. Because I got a neighbor who's a Christian and he never do, he never even look over the fence. Never tried to find out why I wear tight frock to church. Did you ever think to give them a frock? Maybe it's the only one they got that look decent. But they realize it's better to wear tight frock and get put down and curse out and not and, and don't miss the word of God. Because the word of God is food unto her bones. We need to stop and look and see what's going on. And everybody who you've ever dissed and put down, they're better after all of them put together. They're doing better than you. Why? You think it's like a leak side yet? My God. <laughs> look, you, you, you see how my bony, my mother, eh? me can't get fat. Every time I eat good and try to get fat, somebody give me something for my me down. Every time I do try to step up two times, they do something to pull me down. But a real winner never quits. And a quitter can never win. And I learned that a long time ago. I learned what makes a great man or a great woman. There is no way you're going to achieve greatness without a test. And that's why they call you cannot enter into heaven without a testimony. That's why they call it a test. They call it a test because you need a testimony to enter into the kingdom of God. And if your testimony is, well, I'm thanking the Lord for saving my soul. And I trust that you may, the Lord may keep you. And as you all pray for me, I pray for you in Jesus' name. No, sorry, 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 sorry. No, no, no. That can't even get you if you look into heaven's window. Never mind the door. Those days are gone. I'm sorry. If a church brother or church sister come and take your seat, your box slide for the day. Some of you come to church late and leave early. And when the pastor preach, and you, you feel the spirit lick you, instead of saying, praise the Lord, because one of your nails is broken, you go, praise the Lord. If the pastor take you and you say, you see him and he go for baptize you, you say, pastor, please, let me just put in the perm. <laughs> I just perm my hair, pastor. We need to know what salvation means. I don't care if any of you approve of my change. Or don't approve but I knew I'm not what I used to be I'm not what I used to be I'm not what I used to be I have not yet reached where God wants me to reach but I know that I'm not what I used to be 
I'm halfway there and my glass is not half empty it's halfway filled we need some men and women who have courage today when I went into that church I begged God to just help me to put my gun down and I, I knelt down in front of the altar I passed everybody and walked past them I didn't even know what denomination it was denomination can't save you I'm sorry if you're Adventist and you're on the Adventist train and as this I heard a minister said if you're not on the Adventist train you're not going to heaven it's a devil's lie it's coming from the pit of hell he says I am the branches and you are the vine even though we have many members we have the same vine out of many one people one God one destiny salvation unto righteousness he must be born again he must be born again accepting that Jesus Christ died for your sins while you were yet a sinner receive him now this moment because no man know at the hour nor the time and I remember when I kneeled down I said Lord God please help me I know Lord God that I can't be a Christian but if you help me to go back to Canada I put my gun down I stop dealing drugs and prostitution and pimping help me Lord because the Christians they I'll never measure up to y'all there's always be something wrong with me I'm sorry all I can ask you for those who are sincere pray for me yeah I have sin in my life I have sin in my life and if there be one here that don't come up here I'm a thump you down. Let me give you a sucker punch from Muhammad Ali. One lick from pastor right down. Some of you need some big lick. Some of you need to backslide to get saved again. Some of you need to appreciate the little salvation where God give you. Some of you need to understand what it means to be saved. When you have man a look for your gun, man a look for you for kill you, you realize it's very easy to say, yes, Lord, I will come just as I am without one plea. But Lord Jesus, you mean to say, even if me, even if me, me lie, he said, come as you are. Even if Lord Jesus, even if Miss, Miss, Miss Gear, come, come as you are. Even if me are less beyond Jesus, Lord Jesus, what manner of God are you? Come see him where. Nobody know want to clap. They're not going to think you're a lesbian. They're not going to think you're gay. Clap because you're glad you're born again. Clap because you're glad you're born again. Stop living for people. Don't live for people. They can't help you. God will help you. You think it's because I live a clean, spotless life? Thank God for good reason. Because I can look clean. But if I open up in here, Many of you may not love me. My God, can you imagine? Look at that and him, him look so proper. It's you guys put us in a bad position in the first place. Going on and become such good pretenders that even when you don't do anything wrong, you can't even afford to tell anybody. So you die from constipation. You still dying. If I am my brother's keeper, why I can't talk to my brother? If I am my sister's keeper, why I can't talk to my sister? Slander. Something I have to give, man. I'm going to tell people every day, all over the world, every country I go to, woman love me. Woman and children. I can't do without woman because I come from a woman. And any man when I come from a woman, him is not even a man too. Something wrong. And any man that don't love woman because him come from woman, something wrong. And if you see man and you are man and you love man, something wrong. Things no level. My Bible said things no level. But when me love about that, a guy once came to me and he says, Jerry, I am gay. I have no nature for woman. I said, listen to me. I was a bad man. God heal me take me away from badness whatever you want God to heal you of he can if you want him to and I am willing 
and able to pray for you. You see, when we pray for the gun man and him put on in gun, see, when I pray for the prostitute, she receive healing and she change her life, come off the street. The same way I go into the prisons and the schools and they change, I will pray for you. And because I knew that he was a minister, a man of God, I said, listen, I will pray for you because you really need prayer. Number one, I'm a pastor ordained two and a half years ago by one of the biggest pastors in Canada. Also ordained as an evangelist seven years ago. But when I got the pastoral position, I realized I'm never ready yet. Because where much is given, much is expected. And a pastor is a leader of a flock. Unlike an evangelist, an evangelist can run up remote and gone about in business. Leave your hole in the back. But the pastor has to nurture, protect, take care of, hear every complaint, every easy man squeeze him in the church, have to deal with all kind of you know, bad getting people. We're going with some badness. And then you want to mash up the church if you don't get to talk every Sunday or sing every Sunday. And you tell them how you give the most offering and how you want to have a say in the church. You want to run the pastor's life. Then you go and you cry on him shoulder and you start blow up him in the neck like he's not a, a human being. Him is flesh and blood like everybody else. Be very careful. When you protect a man of God, you protect your own Christian faith. Be very, very careful. And when I received that position, I said, Pastor, I will receive it because you have seen me grow. You know what I am capable of and what God, because every one of us have to have somebody to give an account for us. We not of ourselves. And I said, yes, I'll receive it. But I will not make it public because I have things that God knows. And he will use your weakness to become your strength. Because if you did not have sins in your life, you couldn't prove who God is in your life. You wouldn't need God if you didn't have sin. So you need God every day. So every so often, it's like a thorn in your side. Choking you. All kinds of little things that we possess. But this pastor, I said, yes, you're gay. And you come to me if it was first time, no. We call him in a corner, eh? And when I don't boss him and lick him, when I don't boss him up and lick him up, all when we don't kick him up and beat him up. But you see, when God saves you, you save. So I said, Look, I will pray for you, but I don't want to hold your hand and shut me eye. <laughs> I'm being very honest, and if you don't like honesty, you would better leave. <laughs> I said, I will pray for you because God said we must pray for one another because prayer changes things. Is God going to change this man? I can't change him. And I said, you stand up over there, sir. And I put on a piece of prayer every so often. Me, me. <laughs> God said, you must watch and pray. <laughs> you must be wise. And I prayed for him. And I understand they moved him and sent him to another church. But I don't think that was the solution. Because how I got that to my attention, he was bouncing a young boy on his knee, counseling the young man. And I tell him, I said, if you ever touch that boy, I'm going to backslide for five minutes. And I want you to pray for me about that. Because I don't think it's right that folks should mess with little children. They're like roses. Let them bloom, no man. Let them make their own decision where they want to go, how they want to go. But you go there and pick the flowers now. What are you telling him? You destroy him for life. That's how I became a gunman. Somebody picked my flowers when I was a 10 years old. And let me tell you, it's who your head of a spin. Somebody who's supposed to nurture me, bring me up in the adoration of the Lord. And I was taught never to talk back to my elders. I don't know why on old people telling people them things there. Don't talk back, have respect, have manners. Yes, but you need to give them part too. You need to tell them, say, then touch you the wrong way or do the wrong thing to you. You must talk. No, I was taught only never to talk back. So me shut my mouth up. And the first time I step into a bathtub, it looks so clean. <laughs> I was wondering the first time I go to Farini. 
And, and when me look in it, me lock the door because it, it looks so clean, me never want to step night. <laughs> and when I turn on the shower, the hot water burn me, I'm scream like a pig. I never see hot water in my life in pipe. I go to river and catch water, boil wood, but get wood and boil water. But now it's coming out of the pipe. These people are fantastic. And when that happened, this woman ran inside and, and fixed the water. Now I am 10. I've been bathing in river from my four myself. Wash my foot with quarko bush and make enough soap so and them things there. And this woman won't come bathe me at 10. But because I couldn't talk back, I was taught by my grandmother not to talk back. When she started messing with my private belongings, me look up in the sky, I was so embarrassed. I, my head raised big so, oh God, one of the back of my neck get hot like fire. I don't know this woman, never knew her in my life. And these are the things that led me and I wanted to run away, but I couldn't run away. I didn't have anywhere to run to. Didn't know anybody in the country. Couldn't read or write or spell my name, so I couldn't write my grandmother a letter. And said, take me back to this, from these crazy people. So I go in the closet and I cry. And that was the making, the first time I started to become a bad man. That's how I started to grow. And when the, when the evil would come, she would let me stay in her room and sleep on her bed because her, her husband was a drunk. And rub up against me in the night. Eh? And me catch upon the edge of the bed out, we fall off all night, I can't sleep. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it's not hard to become cruel and wicked and hate. When you see people walking out there, you don't know what they're going through. Leave them alone, no man. Pray for them. When you hear say, people do evil things, look into the depths of it as to what led them to becoming that way. Because you don't know what they're going through. And when you think you're at your worst, somebody worse than you. This is how I became this gunman. But this man, when I prayed and I went back to Canada, I turned my life around and I made a promise to God and it's been 14 years. 14 years. And that's all I can say. 14 years. Now, I want you to stand up. We're going to dance the two rhythm. I want all the best dancers them out here. Because I know it's a long time when no one drop foot. Come drop some Holy Ghost foot. I want the dancers them out here. My selector, you ready? I'm taking you way back to Jamaica. Free trip. Nobody don't move, nobody get hurt. Are you ready, sir? Run the track, man. This is dancing time now. It's going home time, so sweat up and go home. Make sure you all buy the CDs to give to... Oh, Lord. Come on. I got a date. Pull up, pull up. Lord of mercy. Let, let me fix it like how we're supposed to fix it. Now, I want to hear my music coming out of this box. Because I can't hear the two side ones. So give me this one. Let me hear it. All right. And I want you to turn it up because it's not just dance hall. Can't have a good time. All right. Let's go. A round of applause. Christians must have fun. Righteousness is good, but there's fun time. Ooh, ooh, ooh. When the roll is caught up yonder, will you be there? Say, yeah. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Listen me now, hold it, hold it, hold it. I need a little help with that song yeah. When I ask you when the roll is caught up yonder, will you be there? You're going to say, I say yeah. When I ask you when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, will you be there? You're going to say, I will pray. Because someone will need prayer if you go heaven. Are you ready? First one is, I say yeah. Second one is, I will pray. Run, Chuck. When the roll is all up yonder, will you be there? I say yeah. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, will you be there? I will pray. When the dead in Christ shall rise, will you be there? I will pray. We're gonna meet them in the sky, I'll be there. I will pray. Crowd up in 
so say if you get down on your knees and you pray You look up to the one them God Almighty Say he really helps you each and every day No matter what you do, said you must get your pay So you may call a few who come see that way Said it was me that they did to what see it was me that they crucified it was me that they did to watch some people before four to six that's my number oh yeah some people before four to six that's my number mm -hmm. some people before four to six that's my number oh yeah some people before four to six that's my number Everything is in the face to the most high Shall I find under the shadow of the mighty God I will save the Lord He's my refuge and my strength He's my rock and my fortress I said a thousand shall fall at thy side And ten thousand at thy right hand But it shall not come nigh thee Only, only with thine eyes That thou behold the arm of the wicked Only with thine eyes That thou behold the arm of the wicked I said him sweet, him sweet, him sweet, him is Jesus sweet. What we said? Your number now. Pick it up, mister. You hear what I say, sir? Get on your knees and pray. Look up to the Almighty. Hey. Me say me read me Bible, me say me read me Bible. Me take it from Genesis to Revelation. Sometimes Matthew, Mark, Lada, Luke, and John. Who oh, watch us with the one in God first Corinthians? Then you get the one named Paul the Christian. Who oh, watch us with the one in God the Savior? Everything we come up from, everything we come up from. You go from the jingle ever. Yeah. What's your number now? What's your number? I say, call up people say, be here what I say. Call up people say, be here what I say. You know, do what I say. Say, be listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Tell the big ladies, say, be do what you can. Get up on your knees and you pray to the mind. I say, I said, me go over the east, Jesus still there. Go over the west, Jesus still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run next track, run next track. Take off some of the reverb. Hey, 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 hey. Follow me, come, follow me, come, follow me, come, follow me. Draw a line, draw a line, draw a line, draw a line. Woo! All right, go. A miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a wonder. He's a miracle. He's a miracle working. Just to take it and his word, believe him, receive him, he'll make your life brand new. 
and the Lord sanctify me. Give my sins were higher than the mountain, and the Lord sanctify me. Who oh, sing it? Glory, hallelujah, when the Lord the fire. Oh, yes, the fire. I've been redeemed from the blood of the Lamb. Oh, run next track, run next track, next track. If your shoes are burned, you kick it off. Hi, 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 hi. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Oh, yeah. here we go. <laughs> Monitor, get something on with I have a never-ending love for you. So from now on, that's all I want to do. From the first time we met, I knew. I have a never-ending love for you. After all this time, I've been alone, Jesus. Let's love one another. Let us be one another. Oh, from now on, <laughs> that's all I want to do. Cause I feel so good now. Everybody was blessed. Praise God. Let's close your eyes. Righteous, eternal God and Heavenly Father, these wonderful people, we are your people, Lord God, the sheep of your pastures. 
Lord God, may you bless each and every one that has come here tonight. May they go away and say, yes, Jesus, he was here. We had a good time. Nobody was hurt. Nobody don't diss anybody. Everybody was nice. Even when you take the end out of nice, Jesus, it's still nice. Precious Jesus, bless your people. Because we're Christians and we got lots to be happy about and to rejoice. Let them go home safely, Lord God. Direct them in their path. Give them love and unction in them gumption to make them function. Let them stop back talk and move forward ever. Like the Rasta man say, backward never in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless and thank you all.